Oh, and I hate summer. So, that's why I'm wearing shorts, just like in the winter. Uh, okay, since that, since Carlos Knight's going to be doing the, the Spanish documentary, because, you know, everybody's doing one now. Everybody. So, I'm going to go with this guy and uh, make this Spanish one. The album will be out. I've got two guys I'm working with. Totally unmetal dudes, but they're really good musicians, so I'm going to hopefully glean a bit off them and maybe uh, maybe some of the songs are going in a different direction, especially Eternal Darkness. I can't seem to get that to where I like it. Anyways, you know, what is there to talk about? Hating people? What about playing? Okay, here's a story. And most of the stories I remember, look, here's, here's one, because they're all about fail attraction. Here's one with uh, Stiletto, the first band that I put together that, uh, well, let's say Trey started to put together a band. I joined, and then I took the drummer and, unfortunately, the other guitar player, which I did not want to do, put my friend in, Tony, on bass. And then two weeks before the show, our first show at the Roxy, I found a drummer who would sing, Rudy. And it worked. And we played, you know, the Roxy. Then we played the Troubadour. Then we played the Waters Club. Then we played the Whiskey. Then we played the Troubadour. Then we played the Country Club. Then we played the Troubadour. Then we played the Whiskey again. And then we played... Uh, bunch of places all it was all between like July June and September and then I broke the band up and then October November December I found Mandy and then trick-or-treat was I started trick-or-treat okay so Rudy was out of control he got thrown out of the band like after I mean well the second to the last show because the last show was with our new singer you look great. You look just like Bon Jovi, which I did not want. And you sounded like hell. So I was breaking the band up after the show. And it was Troubadour show. It was packed. We'd actually got a pretty big following going. I don't know how, because I thought we were a disaster. But, uh, okay, so Rudy was really scared. He was used to being behind the drums. So he would drink like half a bottle of vodka before he hit the stage. And if he was too drunk, we'd shoot him, you know, a little pep. So he was a loose cannon, as they say. So I'm sitting there playing guitar. Oh, yeah, I'm coming over towards the drums because I'm starting, like, my song. It was called I Know What I Want. So I started, and I get over next to the drums, so I'm like, bah, 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 and I'm looking at everybody, making sure they're not, you know, picking their ass or whatever. And Rudy jumps up onto the uh, drum riser. So, you know, usually when he, you know, the, the whole band kicks in, he screams or whatever. I thought he was going to jump off the riser. Instead, when the whole band kicks in, he grabs me like this. He's on the drum riser. And I'm, you know, all 145, 47 pounds, high heels, very... Mm, and uh, there's a picture, well, actually that picture right there, you can't see it, but there's a picture of me playing. Uh, it was at that show, I remember, because they had this weird drum riser that the Troubadour usually didn't have. It was weird, it was just a big box. It's before they'd gotten, because uh, for a while they had the Motley Crue riser. Because Motley Crue gave it to Rat, and then Rat took off, and they Rat gave it to the Troubadour. So everybody got, everybody got to play on the Motley Crue Rat Riser for a while. Anyways, this was not then. So he starts to try to pick me up by my neck or my head like this. I thought he was choking me. But he wanted me to get up on But he was so out of it. You know, he was all like 5'7". You know, he was like a Tasmanian devil. So he's choking me. And I'm like, son of a bitch. So I'm trying to, you know, not mess up. So, you know, play it safe. Just keep it, you know, A ringing out. A. And, you know, I'm like, I'm grabbing for him. 
and I finally get his extensions, because everybody had extensions back then, and I start yanking on him. Ugh! And he starts, he falls to his knee, and I can see him looking at me, and I go, let go of my neck, you ass. He's like, oh. And I'm like, what the hell was that? So by the time this has all happened, the band kept playing, the drummer was laughing his ass off, Daz, and now it was solo time, and I'm soloing. <laughs> so I'm like, I hear the da 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 and I'm like, it's, oh my gosh. So I start to do the solo, and my guitar is totally out of tune because I've been, you know, the bar had been all screwed up, and I've been pulling on it as I was trying to yank Dickle Dick off the riser. So, pissed me off to all hell. So that's when I actually had to use another guitar for one song while they tuned up this and then played three songs and we're done. But just to be strangled on stage, I mean, I was blacking out. I could just see everybody going, and I'm like, I can't believe this idiot is going to strangle me until I pass out on stage. What an idiot! <laughs> so, you know, a few shows after that, he tries to stab somebody, I think Tony or somebody, and so they had a band meeting without me, the guys who started the damn band, and kicked Rudy out, told me to kick Rudy out, but that they had found a replacement already. I'm like, really? Who? And they brought him in, I'm like, well, he looks all right. The girls will like it, but I wanted, I was getting ready to take the, I was gonna try very hard to push the other guitarist out and do the trick-or-treat thing. And bring, you know, with Rudy though. Because Rudy wanted to, you know, he didn't scream either. He was a, a growler. And, uh, you know, if I couldn't have Vince Neil, I wanted, well, whatever. It worked for a minute. I mean, if, if you know, we all know this story about Manny Lyon and how what an ass he is. And how many careers, mainly his, he screwed up. Apparently, he's got something on Wikipedia, and what I've heard, it's all complete bullshit. And I tried to uh, contact Wikipedia and say, you know, I want to, you know, change a few things here because this guy's saying a bunch of lies, and actually, why don't I have a page? I'm going to put a page up. They're like, oh, you can't put up your own page. I'm like, what? I know... 20, 30 people that have put up their own pages. You know, they ha usually somebody else has to do it. Somebody that doesn't really know you. I go, if they don't know me, how are they going to put up a page about me? Well, they're like, well, somebody that's not biased, like you would be. I go, no, I'm not biased. I just want to put the facts up about, because I did have something. It was connected to Mandy, and it was connected to Jackson. And some twit ass jerk off at Wikipedia you know I don't know what they do besides just go through stuff and they decided that they didn't know who I was or they couldn't find out enough information really quickly because I'm not on any major label release that I know of <laughs> well I am but I'm not credited for it and so it doesn't really matter right so they just popped me off the Jackson site and they popped me off the two other sites. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I do exist. He goes, well, prove it. I go, prove it? What am I going to... So I hate Wikipedia. Hate them. There's your story. I hate Wikipedia. My singer tried to choke me to death on stage. Another story with that band, Stiletto. Because before every show, the drummer would give us all bumps. This Everything does turn into a drug-related, doesn't it? Well, okay, so we're all bumped up pretty good. And we're down at the Waters Club. This is a club that has a, the stage, and behind the stage is a fake waterfall, but it's real water. But, it, you know, it's... So it stinks because it's always got that moldy smell and you're right by it's in san pedro so you're by the ocean you got the ocean smell and the harbor which stink like hell in the 80s and then this stinky waterfall so we're playing and there's a bunch of 
they split the room in half. There's actually a little wall for the Marines and Navy guys to sit over here so they can be sit there unmolested and they won't pick any fights and kill anybody. And then the rest of the people sit over on the right side. <laughs> At least that's how it was when we played there. So everybody on our side was cheering, all 20, 30 people. <laughs> and there was like the whole side of the Marines and the Navy guys just packed. And they didn't know what to make of us because we were glam. And I was glammed out, totally friggin' had a long earring that I kept wearing. And this time it got hooked. It was a star. And it got hooked onto my guitar string. And I'm like, holy shit. And I'm trying to call my roadie out to come. And that starts the Marines laughing. laughing. So we usually do one, two, three songs. And then we take a break. And the singer says something stupid. And then we go on. So one, two, three, and I got the thing out. They're still laughing about my earring getting stuck to the guitar string. And that we all look like a bunch of ugly girls. Well, not me, but everybody else. <laughs> and the bass player, he looked cool. So Rudy gets a beer bottle off the drum riser, goes, what are you laughing at, assholes? Stand up and cheer. And he throws it at the Marines. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? We're going to die. And they all like, Bleep. they stop laughing. And they're just looking at us. And I'm like, kill the singer. Not me. Nobody else. And so I'm like looking. I'm literally behind him pointing. Kill him. And they're looking at me like, I'm like, okay. So, you know, I run over, get the bass player. I'm like, right after the last song, everybody get in the in the car and get the hell out. Let the roadies get the stuff in the van, and Rudy's got to drive that home, and that's who they want to kill. <laughs> so we're leaving. Right after the last song, don't even say anything. Just me, you, the drummer, and if you want to bring a guitar player, and get in the car and go. So that's what we did. And Rudy almost got his ass beat to death because he threw a beer bottle at, like, a hundred Navy, and those, that was the audience. We had like 20 or 30 people for us, and then a whole, it was a nightmare. The guy was an idiot, but that's what I wanted. I wanted somebody that would, you know, do stuff to stir up the crowd. I don't care what it was. He got a, a blow-up clown, an inflatable clown, and beat it to death on stage and stabbed it. That was the first, no, yeah, the first show. And his friend Rusty, coat hanger, threw the clown up. And I'm like, what the hell's a clown? And then Rudy takes a knife out and starts stabbing the friggin' clown to death. And I'm like, okay, so we're clown killers. And then I could, I knew David Lee Roth was there. He was there to see whoever was playing after us because we were opening. And he got up and talked to the guy at the back door and went right out the back door and into the rainbow. I'm like, I can't believe David Lee Roth just walked out on us. We suck. We suck. That first show was horrible. And plus, me, the guitar player kept running over to me to ask questions, and then they'd run back, and we all had, like, one or two effects. I had my micro amp, and he had, like, five effects. And then the bass player, we were all running with cables. So we would all got tangled up, so by, like, halfway through the set, he ran back over and could only get five feet away, and then all the cape, all the cables were wadded, you know, like this together, and holding all our effects in the air in the middle of the stage, and we could, we we're all like five feet apart, and that was we had like one song to do, and Tony had sprained his ankle because he just got these brand new friggin' Nikki Six boots, and so he was sitting on the. Uh, stage so we all had to back up so he could so we could, he could play and then we finished the set that was horrible and that was the first show but it got such a big reaction even though it was horrifyingly negative that our next show was the country club someone called us you know and we played the country club whatever so there's your stories not that crazy nobody beating anybody up really but, uh, yeah, there you go, the 80s, crazy.
I'm telling you. Subscribe and comment. Do it. Later.